E-bike maintenance may sound a little bit daunting, especially if you're a beginner. In reality, the bikes don't require that much more maintenance than a regular mountain bike. You've got the motor, the battery, and the operating system, but these are all sealed units, so they require no maintenance whatsoever and should last a lifetime of the bike if looked after properly. There's little things like making sure there isn't excessive mud buildup around the motor, making sure your cabling to the speed sensor is in good condition, and the magnet on the rear wheel, making sure that's secure and nice and clean. But aside from that, it's all pretty simple stuff. So I'm gonna show you a few tasks you can do in your workshop to keep on top of your e-bike. Things like headset adjustment, because mine's feeling a little bit loose. So let's head down the workshop and get on the spanners. Now something that's very common to happen to your brand new e-bike is that the headset is going to become loose. Now this is usually noticed when you're riding down a rough trail or under braking you hear a bit of a knocking or a clicking coming from that top of the headset. Now a great way to test for this is by holding on the front brake stationary and pushing the bike back and forward and feeling if there's any movement around the top headset cup. This denotes that it's going to be a loose headset and that it needs tightening up. But the tools you're gonna to use for this is gonna be a basic Allen key, a four mil and a five mil, and you're gonna find those on a basic multi-tool too. So to tighten that loose headset, it's fairly simple. You're just gonna get your four or your five mil Allen key into the side of that stem, just loosen those bolts off. Just make sure they're nicely loosened off. You want them just nicely like that. And then all we're gonna do is just preload this top bolt. Now this essentially just pulls the headset cups up together nice and tight. So you don't wanna go crazy on this, just lightly tension it, just enough to remove that movement out of the bearings. Then you, all you need to do is retorque the bolts on the side of the stem and then test the headset on the ground. Just make sure it's running nice and smooth, move your bar side to side and pull the front brake and rock it. Just put your fingers around that top cup to make sure all that movement has disappeared. Then hopefully you should have a nice smooth running headset with no noise. Now if you're riding a specialised bike, you might have the SWAT system installed where you have the uh, multi-tool in the top cap. Now this is essentially the same system but reversed. You have the preload cap in the bottom of the forks, you just undo the stem as we did before, preload the fork in the bottom of the steerer, then retention it and that should hopefully remove that movement out of the headset too. Something you may encounter after a few rides on your e-mountain bike is that your suspension feels a little bit softer. Maybe you're getting more pedal strikes on the trail or you're bottoming out on those bigger hits. This is probably because your suspension is getting that little bit softer. It's lost a little bit of pressure. So you really need to keep on top of that. And the way we're gonna do that is by using a shock pump to replace that lost pressure. So how are we gonna fix your bike if it's feeling a little bit soft? Well, first up, you need to measure how soft that suspension actually is. And the way we do this is by measuring the sag. Now you need to find yourself somewhere you can prop yourself up nice and safely. Then you need to go get into your full riding gear. I mean everything, including your helmet, your backpack, a spare battery, and filling your bladder up. Everything that you do take with you on a normal ride you need to be wearing now. Then you sit on your bike, just nice and slowly and steady and just load the suspension up. Now on the rear shock, you'll find a rubber band that you can slide up to the shock base. Push that all the way up to there, uh, to hitting the home, and then stand off of the bike. Now usually on most of the modern bikes on the rear shocks, they're gonna have markings that are gonna show you how much sag you're actually using. 20%, 30%, and 40% is marked up on this RockShox rear shock. And the manufacturers recommend that you run these bikes around 30% sag. So if you've gone past that or above it, you know that the suspension is either too hard or too soft. In this case, it's actually too soft. So we're gonna pump it up using that shock pump, measure it as we go, to make sure we're sitting at 30% and not at 40%. So how do you go about increasing that pressure into the rear shock? Well, first up, you need to find the valve, which is usually just gonna be like a standard car type valve with a valve cap on. Unscrew that nice and easy. Then we need to connect the shock pump to the shock. Usually got a nice flexi hose on there if it is a bit harder to reach. And just make sure you don't cross thread these because they can become an absolute nightmare. Once you've got it on the valve, you'll feel the pressure go into the shock pump and you'll get a reading on the, on the shock pump itself. This is just sitting just over 160 PSI on there at the minute. So I'm just gonna pump the pump like you do 
a regular tire pump and increase that pressure. Probably just add about 20 PSI to that and then give it another test to see where we are on that sag, on the sag uh, measurement on the band. So we're up to 180. Now, you need to disconnect the shock every time you're measuring sag as well because you can get pressure that's actually stored into the pump itself. Move your band to the back of the shock base and then lightly load it again. And that looks pretty good to me. Looking at that, we're bang on 30% and ready to go and hit the trails without any pedal strokes or harsh bottom outs. So that's feeling pretty good for me. We're about 30% on those sag markings on the shock. So it's really worth noting what pressure you're running in that rear shock. Just keep a note of it and then you can check at all times whether that shock is set at the right pressure for you. You can make it run a little bit softer or a little bit stiffer depending on the type of riding you're doing. But knowing that base pressure is definitely key. Now gears that don't index properly or are skipping around all over the place are a nightmare on any bike, but particularly on an e-bike, if you're trying to apply all that power through the chain and the cassette and it's jumping around, it can destroy chains and it can destroy your cassette. So making sure those gears are dialed in is definitely something you want to be on top of. Now tools wise for adjusting your gears, you actually don't need any tools whatsoever. If they've been set up correctly in the first place, it's all done up at the shifter end. Now if your gears aren't selecting properly on your e-mountain bike, it's probably due to cable stretch, particularly on a new bike, this is quite common to happen. So all you need to do is find the barrel adjuster on your shifter, and if they're not selecting up the gears, so going towards your easier gears, you need to add more cable tension. So you just wind that barrel adjuster out, just one or two clicks, try your gears again. It's quite easy to do this on the fly actually, rather than in the work stand. As you go, just increase that tension one click at a time. It's actually indexed on the shifter. But if you're not shifting down well enough, then it's probably that you've got too much tension on that barrel adjuster. So exactly the same, but just the opposite way. Just turn it in and decrease that cable tension and that should see that downshift return quite well as well. Now, a lot of people think that all these screws on the back of the derailleur is a way that you're gonna adjust your gears. Now, as I mentioned before, if your gears are set up properly, you shouldn't need to touch any of this whatsoever. It's purely down to cable tension. One click of the shifter should denote one shift on the rear derailleur up or down the cassette. That is what we're looking for. Do not touch these screws. Now brakes that are rubbing are not only gonna do your head in on a trail ride, they're also gonna sap that all important battery power and taking it out from your range from your battery. So getting those brakes working efficiently is definitely really key. So if you have got a rubbing brake, you just spin the wheel just to make sure your rotor isn't bent. But if it's an intermittent noise, just every time it goes past the caliper, that denotes a bent disc. But if it's constantly rubbing the whole time, it's time to get those calipers centered. Now the tool we're gonna need for this one is just a simple five mil Allen key, or if you've got Magura brakes, you're gonna need a T25 Torx key. So all we're gonna do for this one is undo the caliper mount bolts on your fork. So just get your Allen key in there, just undo those so they're nice and loose. And just give the caliper a little wiggle just to unseat it, just to make sure it will move. Then hold on the, the brake, whether it be your front or your rear brake, and just hold that on nice and firmly. So that should center the caliper nicely. Then it's just a case of retorquing these bolts back up just to the manufacturer's specifications. Just get them nice and tight. The whole time that I'm doing this, I've constantly got that front brake lever held down. And once you're happy, it's torqued up nice and tight. Then you release the brake and that should see that wheel spin nice and freely without any rubbing. Now a common mistake when using this setup technique is that riders release the lever too early before they've tensioned the caliper up nice and tight. You need to keep the lever squeezed at all times to make sure that caliper is centered really nicely. If it doesn't work first time, just try it over again. It definitely will work, so keep persevering. Riding down the trail sounding like you're riding a budgerigar is definitely not a good look. 
the chain chirping away and grinding away, or even the other end of the spectrum with a dirty, over lubed chain that's going to be wearing out all your components is definitely not a good look. There's some simple tools that you're going to need to keep it on top of your chain, and that is degreaser, a rag, and some chain lube. It's really important to keep on top of that chain care because if you don't, it's gonna wear out your cassette and your chain ring and replacing all of that is very expensive. And the best thing to be doing after every single ride is cleaning and degreasing and re-lubing that chain. Now the best way to do that is by using a degreaser on the chain. You can either spray this on or use one of those really cool chain baths which trap the chain and roll it for a series of brushes with the cleaner combined. It's really a good way of not getting messy, but the drive chain cleaner is just just as good, spray that on your chain, rinse it off, then you need to dry the chain. This is really important. If you don't dry the chain, you're simply gonna be locking all that moisture within those rollers. Then you use a proper lube for your chain. So this is either gonna be a wet or a dry or a multi-purpose lube, depending on the conditions you're gonna be riding your bike in. Now there's some classic mistakes when it comes to lubing and degreasing your chain. Now number one is the one that I mentioned earlier, is lubing a wet chain. If you lube a wet chain, you're simply gonna lock all that moisture into your chain when you put the chain lube on there, and that's gonna make it all rust out and corrode that roller internally. Number two is applying too much degreaser, especially if you're using a spray degreaser, you're gonna contaminate that rear disc. And thirdly, the last one is applying lube in the wrong way. You need to apply it to the inside of the chain rollers rather than the outside of the chain. If you apply lube here, when it goes around the chain ring and the cassette is simply gonna fall off. If you apply it to the inside, that's the part that actually contacts all of the metal parts of chain ring, the cassette and the jockey wheels. And that way it's gonna really penetrate the chain nice and deep. So maintenance doesn't have to be that daunting. Today I've ran you through a few basic exercises that can be undertaken by the most beginner style of mechanic with minimal tools. We've got loads of videos here on the channel if you want to check out more maintenance videos. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to us here on the channel and give us a follow on social media too. Thanks for watching and happy spannering.